It's one of the biggest mass murder cases in Illinois history. Seven people killed after taking Tylenol that had been laced with cyanide. But there was almost an eighth victim who unknowingly had some of the tainted pills in her hand. She hasn't shared her story since 1982. Now CBS2 investigator Dave Zavini has learned her family's DNA is an important piece of the investigation. 40 years later, as police lean on new DNA technology to finally put the killer behind bars. You were the lucky ones. Yeah, we were. I don't know why we were spared, but we were. Laura Morgan was three years old when her parents were almost murdered during the mass Tylenol killings in 1982. Cyanide contaminated Tylenol has been responsible for three deaths in the Arlington Heights area. Do not take Tylenol until further notice. What kind of person opens up a capsule and fills it with cyanide? and puts it back in a jar and puts it on a shelf. He's an animal that he kills people with no fear. Seven people died and Tylenol was quickly removed from store shelves nationwide, but not before Laura Morgan's mom, Linda, bought a bottle at her local grocery store. Your mom was so close to being killed. That's right. Her mother had a capsule from a tainted bottle in her hand. How close were you to taking it? Very close. I had the bottle open. I looked at one of the capsules and then I thought, no, I'll just, I'll just take aspirin instead. You could have been the eighth victim. I could have been the eighth victim. That close? It was that close. It was in our medicine cabinet, at our home, in Wheaton, sitting there with poison. Her mother and father, a well-known judge, took the bottle of poison pills to police. Presiding Judge Lewis Morgan of DuPage County Domestic Relations Court waited in the Wheaton Police Station for his fingerprints to be taken and compared with a print found on a box of tainted Tylenol capsules his wife Linda had purchased. We showed each of the Morgans this clip from our CBS2 News archives. She has told the same story dozens of times now, how she put the Tylenol aside and decided to take another pain reliever for an aching leg. I've never seen that before. For. So it kind of um, makes it personal. The couple came here with their three year old daughter, Laura, who is too young to understand that her mother narrowly escaped becoming a victim of cyanide poisoning. Now that I'm old enough to understand and have a child of my own, um, knowing that my life could have, sorry, knowing that my life could have been forever altered without my mom. Or dad. Or dad. We've learned the entire Morgan family is part of a sophisticated, ongoing investigation to track down the killer. Newly obtained law enforcement records by the CBS2 investigators reveal the intensity of DNA testing, including the collection of DNA within the last few years. Does that look right? You see the dates? Yep. January 14th, 2020 at, yep, the Arlington Heights Police Department. That's where you went. To have my cheeks swapped. That search now includes the need for a DNA comparison from the Morgan family. I'm assuming that there's got to be some other DNA on that bottle. But whose DNA is it? And why the need to test the Morgan's DNA after all these years? Investigators won't comment on that, but documents show they took Laura Morgan's DNA and one of her father's favorite pipes to also test. He died in 2018. And that basically means what? They have something. If, if they need DNA, if they need my cheek swab, if they need evidence from the past, people from the past, DNA from the past, they must have something that they're rerunning or retesting. No one should have to live life wondering. People should be able to get justice for what happened to them. Uh, perpetrators should be caught the first time. Meet Kristen Middleman. Even though she can't confirm it, the CBS2 investigators have also learned Othram, Middleman's Houston-based lab, has been hired to test evidence by police from Arlington Heights, the village where three people from the Janus family died after taking poison Tylenol. Do you think they'll ever solve this crime? I hope so, before I die. Joe Janus's brothers and sister-in-law were killed in Arlington Heights. 
What can you say about Tylenol itself? It's a horrific crime. It, it, it's horrific. Middleman agreed to an interview at Othram's testing facility under the condition that she could not discuss the specifics of any open case or acknowledge they are even involved. There are cases that we've completely solved, notorious cases we've completely solved, that we cannot speak of until law enforcement comes out and, and speak of, speaks of them or announces it themselves. Othram analyzes human DNA and can extract the most minute amount from old or degraded items to try to find distant relationships to whoever might be the killer. And that's something I wouldn't be able to see without a microscope. Oh my gosh, no. It's smaller than, than the top of a, pen, of a pen needle. If they find a lead, they share it with police. We obtained this document from Arlington Heights Police. It's a lab kit report, highly redacted, but shows Othram was hired by them in connection to the Tylenol case. Can you tell me how someone would leave DNA on a pill bottle? Absolutely, so if, if you've used the pill bottle to open it or to, to touch the pills, then you have, uh, you've likely left your DNA there. What about on the pills themselves? If you've touched the pill with your hands, you've left DNA there. And does that degrade over time? I think that it, it does, but degradation is something that we are completely insensitive to. I mean, it's very difficult to commit a crime and not leave traces amounts of DNA. These documents we obtained labeled cradle to grave were compiled by the FBI investigating the Tylenol murders. They tracked the collection and testing of evidence like bottles and capsules. We created our own database from these documents and analyzed how the evidence was maintained over the last four decades. The FBI files show evidence was shipped and handled by at least a dozen government agencies and private labs. In 2007, all the evidence was streamlined and sent to the FBI in Quantico, Virginia, when they re-examine the Tylenol case. Arlington Heights PD is now the lead agency and has hired additional private labs like Othram. People think, I got away with it. And every time we catch one of these perpetrators, they're living a normal life. Do you ever just sit there and think, we just outsmarted a madman? Yeah. The police investigation into the Tylenol murders has centered around this man, James Lewis, since the day he got caught writing extortion letters saying the killings would not stop unless a million dollars was wired to a special bank account. Did you commit the Tylenol murders? I did not. He was convicted of extortion, served more than a decade, is now free, but never charged with the killings. Do you know who did? I, <clears throat> I do not know who did, no. Last year, the CBS2 investigators traveled to Boston, where Lewis now lives. Hi, Mr. Lewis. Lewis refused to talk to CBS2 back then, but we also learned police went to his home to also question him again in September. You can still get skin cells off a 40-year-old pill bottle. Yeah. If you're asking me, can you touch something and then get enough DNA to identify somebody, yes. It doesn't matter if it's a pill bottle, a gun, a bullet, anything. You can. And it's been done. <sighs> it's, it's hard for me. I hope that at least families like the Janices and so many other families whose lives are wrecked by this are brought some kind of peace. What do you feel? Uh, lucky, sad. Those families. You could have been one of them. I could have been one of them. I came so close. Arlington Heights police confirmed they asked for Laura Morgan's DNA to eliminate it as part of their ongoing investigation. They wouldn't say why they waited so long to gather that DNA. We will stay on it. Dave Savini, CBS2 Investigators. The CBS2 Investigators have done extensive reporting on the Tylenol murders, interviewing families, investigators, and attorneys. You can see them all at cbschicago.com painkiller.